It was reported several weeks ago that parents and staff are pressuring the Toronto District School Board to stop allowing parents to opt their children out of drag queen events. The argument put forward is no longer that it should be permissible to have drag queen shows in schools, but that parents should be barred from opting out their own children if they are uncomfortable with such performances. Drag Queen Story Hour, in which performers embody the most pernicious stereotypical conceptualization of feminine dress, makeup and behavior while reading stories to children, is a ritual that's become common at libraries and other public venues. Most drag story hours are not sexually explicit, though there have been incidents where sexualized behavior has occurred. Proponents of drag story time suggest it captures the gender fluidity of childhood and gives kids glamorous, positive and unabashedly queer role models. That might be convincing, except that drag queens are not ideal queer role models, in any respect. In fact, they are quite the opposite. Nevertheless, some are now pushing to make such events mandatory in the name of safeguarding gender identity and expression. Most parents and educators support teaching children about and immersing them in diversity, including cultural diversity, racial diversity, and diverse socioeconomic realities. Children will encounter these forms of human diversity in our society and a basic understanding of each lays an important foundation for them. A similar argument could be made for gender diversity education, when presented in an age-appropriate fashion. Barring parents from opting out of conversations about gender identity in the classroom. However, is a matter that should not be taken lightly. Overstepping parental consent is hardly justifiable, even when the objective is to foster inclusivity and acceptance. Moreover, mandating drag queen story hour is absurd, because being a drag queen is not a gender identity and does nothing to foster inclusive environments. Being transgender and performing drag are entirely different. The first is the real-world experience of individuals who live in alignment with the opposite sex from their biological reality to relieve acute discomfort. The latter are individuals who, separate from any particular gender identity, dress up and embody regressive exaggerations of femininity for the purpose of performance, personal enjoyment, or making money. This doesn't make drag bad. But suggesting that it helps children understand real-world gender expression just isn't accurate. If we wish to broaden a child's notion of gender, we do well to model this by breaking down gender stereotypes. We could demonstrate to our girls that it's okay to like sports, construction toys, and dressing in t-shirts if that suits their individual preferences. We could show them strong female role models who are not stereotypically feminine. We could illustrate to our boys that it's dignified to have feminine preferences and interests, and that embodying a nurturing and empathetic demeanor doesn't make you any less of a man. With Drag Story Hour, we don't just enforce the masculine-slash-feminine stereotypes, we model them in the most extreme form imaginable. Despite mild improvement, North American boys continue to grow up in a culture that underpins effeminate behavior as unbefitting. And drag fortifies this understanding. Drag queens don't teach young boys that it's acceptable to present traditionally feminine qualities in everyday life, because drag, by its very nature, is inherently performative. What Drag Story Hour does do is teach boys that there is comedic value in the embodiment of their feminine tendencies. I encountered drag as a boy with closeted transgender feelings. It contributed to my understanding that there was something freakish and shameful about my feminine inclinations. The drag queens I encountered were not real people, they were caricatures. And the message I internalized was that it's acceptable for men to present effeminate, so long as it's presented as parody. If we want to support gender-questioning children like little me, we are going about it in entirely the wrong way. Bewilderingly, only in the realm of gender have we come to believe that caricatures are appropriate to expand a child's understanding of diversity. If we wish to help children understand more about minority communities, we might invite a Middle Eastern speaker to share her life journey and traditions. Such diversity would enlighten children who don't know much about other cultures. But we would never ask a white man to dress up as an Arab, mimic a Middle Eastern accent and exaggerate musty stereotypes of Middle Eastern culture. This wouldn't achieve the goal of broadening children's horizons to human diversity. It would trivialize the authentic experience of Middle Eastern individuals. And it might very well lead children to believe that being Middle Eastern is something that someone does, rather than something someone is. Rather than move to mandate drag queen story hour on dubious grounds, we should change our approach and present regular story hours, in which unremarkable adults read stories to children. Sometimes those adults might be men and sometimes they might be women. Sometimes they might be Christian and sometimes they might be Hindu. 
and perhaps occasionally they might be regular. Run-of-the-mill transgender individuals like myself. This would highlight diversity as it arises naturally, rather than in a contrived and over-exaggerated way. Wouldn't that better prepare our children for the diversity they'll encounter as they grow older?